Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Planescape Torment. We made it into the Gathering Dust Bar. Let's go ahead and explore the place a little bit and see how many people are here. What's up? All right. All right. Okay, so the place isn't that big. Are there any other exits? No, okay. Several things we can look at here as well. Let's look at, I guess, what's this? These gates are made of featureless black metal. There doesn't appear to be any way to open them. This one as well. And there was something over here? This looks like a mirror, but there is no reflection of the bar in it. All right. Yeah, sure, why not? Done. Okay. I guess we'll start at the bar, huh? since this is where we walked in, done. and we'll make our way counterclockwise to the place. You see a somber, pale-faced dustman in black robes. He is staring silently into his drink. Greetings. The dustman looks up. Yes? Can I ask you some questions? Uh, not at this time. The dustman becomes silent and turns back to his drink. Alright, farewell then. We have some zombie workers. This female corpse is dressed in a heavy burlap shirt covered with food and wine stains. Her lips have been stitched closed, and her arms and legs are wrapped in several layers of bandages. The bandages seem to have been soaked in preservatives to help keep the corpse fresh. As a result, the corpse's rotting odor has been replaced with an equally repulsive vinegar smell. Ugh. Wow. I, uh, ugh. I remember walking once on a trail and coming across uh, basically what was meant as a roadkill. And, oh, holy crap. I can't imagine vine a vinegar smell just as bad as that. Uh, it was great talking to you. Farewell. As you turn away, you notice Mort staring at you. Eh? Eh? Oh, God, what is it? Did you see the way that cadaverous beauty was staring at me? Mort's teeth chatter as if in anticipation. She was looking for some lucky cutter to thaw her coffin. Please don't start this again. Mort ignores you and becomes thoughtful. I don't really mind the attention, actually. It's just that I like to be seen as something more than a skull, you know? I have feelings that go beyond my base animal instincts. I want courtship, not some fortnight fling around the mausoleum. <laughs> oh, well, how to answer him. These are all wonderful. I don't want to be violent to him. Uh, fine, I understand. Now let's get out of here, alright? <laughs> Mort. Oh my god. Uh, I, I said it before, I'll say it again. He's persistent. I'm gone. No, he's persistent. Eventually, hopefully, that will that will wear that will that will work out for him. Siri, the skeptic. As you approach, the elderly woman turns and stares at you. La, look who's come a calling on Siri today. That's dearest son. She looks you up and down, then shakes her head in disbelief. By every power in its mother, boy. What crypt did you crawl out of? Ha! Let's joke, since we have this option. Well, the crypt was losing its charm, so now I'm looking around for the right place to die. Know of anywhere? She barks a laugh that rattles your ears. Ha <laughs> ha! Not here. Unless you want to die of boredom. Oh, why? What's wrong with here? Someone pinch your sense and your sight, boy? She waves her hand around the bar. Look around. What do your eyes tell you? <laughs> a bunch of fun-loving dustmen, drinking happily and conversing merrily, celebrating life to its fullest. <laughs> You've got a cleft tongue there, boy. Mayhap your tongue is cleverer than you are. She serious squints at you, then snorts. <laughs> that explains the scars. Ah, but that doesn't explain why a dustman is standing here ridiculing other dustmen. Can't answer that one. Are you a dustman? A dustman? I suppose. Siri sniffs. I've seen enough sand pass through the hourglass while wearing these robes. This body's almost ready to pay the ferryman. She chuckles. There's not much mirth in it. <laughs> Are you afraid of dying? Of course I am, boy. Who isn't? She frowns and glances around. Well, except dustmen. They're not afraid to be... Because... Well, they've been swallowing so much of their own bat droppings over the decade. They've blinded themselves into thinking that death is some kind of release. 
You don't sound much like a dustman. She shrugs. I guess dustman robes don't fit me as well as they used to. What happened? She shrugs. Life, I suppose. It, uh... Ah, never you mind. I, I won't bore you with the niggling details. I'd like to know, actually. Oh, would you? She looks at you skeptically. How old do you take me for, boy? We'll lie out of kindness. Rather youngish. Siri blinks, then smiles. Uh, aren't you a dear? She chuckles to herself and coughs. <laughs> well, I'm older than I look. Much older, she sighs. I uh, spent most of my life teaching dustmen. I've seen many dustmen whelps grow within our order. Taught them the ways of the faction. Kept the faith. Preached the tenets of the faction. She frowns. And so on and so on. No questions, no doubt. This life was merely an antechamber that led to the true death. Oh, what happened? Well, a half month back, I went sick with the fever. I thought it was the end. It, uh, it rattled my cage. How so? Her face becomes a stone. There's something about having your faction members circle around your deathbed like a pack of pale-faced ghouls, nodding and agreeing that your suffering and dying is all for the best. Oh, Siri is so fortunate. She s shall soon be relieved of the burden of life. Burden of life? That's when it struck me. Uh, what did? That there's something... A queer expression comes over her features. Addled? About not appreciating your life? The dustman keeps saying that life is misery and suffering, is it? That we should be happy to pass on into oblivion, should we? She shakes her head. Questions, questions. And precious few answers. It sounds like she doesn't believe the dustman philosophy anymore. I myself had a close encounter with death thanks to a blood clot that went to my lungs. So, I'm very familiar with this type of, type of thing. I suppose I have got to warm. I suppose I've got a swarm of doubts all buzzing in my skull. Shrubs her temples. Hard to get them all to be quiet sometimes. They need to be fed some answers, and I haven't got them all worked out yet. What will you do? To be square, boy, I don't know. That's the problem with doubt. I can't even trust that what I'm feeling is true. Or if I'm scared of death only because of my brush with the fever, or even what I should do. Is this a passing thing? I don't know. Oh wow, we have lots of long-winded answers. Let's take a look. So this is telling her that... Okay, this is basically saying that if she doubted her... That she doubts her faith, which is... That she... Her faith could not have been that strong if she's beginning to have doubts about this now. This is basically saying that it's a temporary thing and it will pass. It's a test of her belief. Oh wow, this is a really long way of saying the second one as well. But I actually kind of agree with number one. I think that if you did truly believe in the philosophy, then she would have agreed with them. So I think that this is basically her way out of the cult of, of sorts. Or rather, she doesn't actually believe it now that she's experienced a near-death event. Uh, Siri, if you had truly believed in the Dustin philosophy, then your brush with the fever would not have left you with such doubts. Siri stays, stares at you, then nods slowly. Maybe so. Maybe so. She frowns, her face wrinkling up in concentration. I'll have to chew on it some, over some more. And you should. It's no small matter. Ah, now. Nothing be rattling on about my woes. Siri stares at your scars. You look like you've shared a few handshakes with death yourself. Hasn't that changed your view somewhat? Doesn't it make you appreciate life a bit more? Uh, we'll go with the truth. Well, my condition is unique. I woke up in the mortuary. I think they mistook me for a corpse and were prepared to bury me. 
the strange thing is, I, I think I actually had died and got better. Siri blinks. You're rattling my coffin. No, not really. S strange are the ways of the flames, and I've seen too much to throw any tail out of the wash. She studies your face. If it's true, why has it happened? All I know is I woke up in the mortuary with no memory and covered with enough wounds to kill me three times over. Now, don't be saying that too loud. She glances around. Most peculiar. Never heard of anything like that. Shame about the memories. Do you have any idea why this might happen? And nay, not a one. Never knew anyone who death wouldn't take. Until now. Well, perhaps I can ask you some other questions. Questions, eh? Well, you can ask. Siri looks at you with a steely eye, then smiles. A crypt crawler. <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Uh, I'm searching for a man named Farid. Have you seen him? Siri's face crumples into a frown. That dog! He's the worst of the collector lot. I heard he has his kip set up somewhere in Ragpicker Square, many streets west of the mortuary gate. Dangerous place, though. Some of those collectors aren't patient enough to wait for folks to die, so they can sell them for jink. Collectors? They're vermin that scavenge the bowels of the hive for bodies to sell to the dustmen. Make a living off the dead, a motley breed. Makes you ashamed to share the same city with them. Uh, at least they help keep the streets clean. Can I ask another question? Uh, I wanted to ask you about some of the dustmen in particular. Uh, no harm in it. Who's on your mind? Actually, I met a scribe named Dahl, the mortuary. Uh, do you know him? Uh, Dahl? He was my instructor in the philosophical arts during my early training at the mortuary. A crusty fool to boot. He's ill, so my ears tell me. I bet he'll bore death with his presence. <laughs> uh, is he dying? Sicker than a spotted dog he is. Not much sand left in the hourglass for him. Can I ask you about someone else? Uh, no harm in it. Who's on your mind? One of the embalmers in the mortuary, uh, Evine. Do you know her? Uh, who? A strange young woman? Poor eyesight. Near death? Talons for hands? Siri shakes her head. Uh, maybe she's new a uh, new initiate? I've never heard of her. Uh, no matter. I, can I ask you something else? And I see nothing else here that would be interesting. Again, I'm not going to bother asking people if they've seen a book. That's pretty ridiculous. Uh, I must take my leave then. Farewell, Siri. And good luck. Another normal dustbin. We should talk to him anyway. A silver pale faced dustbin in black robes, telling me drink. Okay, so this is probably the same choice as we got earlier. I'm gone. There's another female zombie what? here. Well oh, sure, why not? What's it gonna hurt? This female corpse is dressed in a heavy burlap Oh, okay, so maybe this is the one we saw earlier. The description's the same. Let's leave her in peace. Wanna trade death experiences? <laughs> More that was awesome. <laughs> The, the way he said it, the inflection on ex experiences, that was awesome. Hello? The zombie gazes at you with vacant eyes. His lips have been stitched closed, and bandages are wrapped several places around his body. The faint smell of alcohol emanates from the corpse. So, seen anything interesting around here? The zombie continues to stare at you. Alright then, great talking to you. You look lost, sir. Oh, there's a dustman here. Oh, this is a bodyguard. So is this one, and this is, oh, this is Emmerich. Okay, we're here to talk to him about finding Farid. You see a heavy-set man with dark skin and grim features. He is dressed in dustman robes and is regarding you with a stony gaze. Greetings. You have the look of one lost. The man's voice is like stone settling. Did the wind send you? Or are you here with purpose? Uh, who are you? I am Emmerich. Factotum? An initiate of the Fourth Circle. Is this your bar? If you measure ownership in copper, this is not my establishment. If you member ownership in spirit, it is mine. He pauses as if trying to emphasize a point. The dustmen here are my students. 
They are under my protection. Can I ask you some questions? Emmerich waits. Can you tell me about the Dustman faction? So, even though we know all this, we should still ask anyway. We might, for example, get a memory if we can get him to say maybe something different. I, I don't actually know, but we, if we have the option to talk to somebody, we should try to exhaust as many of the conversation topics as we can. Dustman seek the true death. Some call it oblivion, but this is incorrect. To Dustman, the true death is freedom from the chains of this false life. Oh, that's interesting. So, they had, okay, so they believe this to be a release from, I guess, suffering, not into oblivion. False life. This life that many cling to with their emotions is a false existence. As long as one clings to it, they will continually be reborn into it. One must divest themselves of emotion to escape this cycle. So they must believe in reincarnation. I see. Uh, can you tell me about how your faction is organized? Dustmen are organized into five circles. The fifth circle is made of the lowest rank of Dustmen initiates. The first circle is comprised of the highest ranking Dustmen, the ruling body of our faction. I had some other questions. I am searching for a man named Farid. Oh, sorry, Farad. Have you seen him? I would know why you seek the Collector Farad. He stole something from me. Emmerich remains silent, his gaze unnerving. He doesn't seem to blink. Why do you want to know my business with Farad? The Collector Farad has brought many corpses to the mortuary of late. One must ask where these bodies are from. Tell me more about the bodies. Some are recent dead. They still have their last moments in their eyes. Many more bodies are centuries old. The dust of ages lies upon their bones. One must ask where these bodies are from. I could find out where these bodies are from. How would you do such a thing? I would track down Farad and ask him. If you spoke with the Collector Farad and returned with his answers, you will have done a great service for the Dustman. Find where the dead he brings to us are from, and you will be rewarded. Very well. I will find Farad, speak with to him and find out where these dead bodies he brings you are from. Emmerich nods. Your path is our path. Return here when you have the Collector's, Farid's answers. Could you tell me where he is? It is not known to me where the Collector Farid is. He hides from the eyes of the Dustmen. I would seek other Collectors and ask them your question. I'll see what I can do then. Farewell. All right, fair enough. While we're here, let's save the game really quick and see if um if these have anything in it. I don't know if I can search these. I, mean, I can search them, but I don't know if I, t if I take anything out of them if I'm I'll gone. be you know, held responsible. This actually seems like a good place to drop some things off as well. So let's do that. We will drop the Dustman things off here, so the Tome of Book, Bone, and Ash can go in here. We'll drop a Rune of Armor. I'm gone. What's the word, Chief? Okay. And Mort can drop... The Rune of Greater Warding. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh. The items should stay inside these things. I've never had them vanish before on me. So I... Oops. I think I'll be okay. We'll also put our scalpel... And... Our sanctuary key. 
I should probably put the Tome of Cheats in here too. I'm gone. Uh, but I'll hold on to it and put it in a different location. Actually, we haven't looked at this skeleton. The skeleton turns toward you, rattling as he does so. A number of his bones are held together with leather straps, and a wine-stained green tunic hangs from his shoulders. Ah, nice tunic. I mean it. The skeleton makes no reply. Uh, great talking to you, Bones. Stay healthy. I'm gone. Old copper eyes. Before you is a tall, silent figure. He could easily pass for a statue, although the deep furrows in his face and brow make you wonder if the sculptor was a little too eager in defining the face with the chisel. He looks well over fifty years old, but exactly how much over fifty is hard to tell. As he slowly turns to look at you, you catch the dull sheen of copper in his eyes. Greetings. Old Copper Eyes stares at you. His eyes are difficult to make out past the black well of his eye sockets, but they look to have a coppery sheen about them. Uh, can I ask you some questions? Copper Eyes says nothing. Uh, never mind then. Farewell. I like how the skeleton seems to be pacing back and forth to check the tables. Interesting chairs, too. They, those can't be very comfortable. Ah, uh, but they're leaning back a bit, I guess. Normal dustman. Normal dustman. Otari Gravesend. Oh, this was the white guy who, who signed the contract with Agnar, I think. This tiny, wizened man is dwarfed by his huge dustman robes. They look as if they were chosen to cloak his small stature. Although he looks to be in his late 90s, this man is extremely energetic and fidgets continuously, and his eyes dart around the bar like a bird's. Wow. Hey, good afternoon. The man's eyes gleam as he takes your measure, and he gives a slight nod in greeting. Hail and well met, traveler. You look like one who is just getting their sigil legs about them. He trails off. Pardon me. Have we met before? Your face seems familiar somehow. Uh, possibly. Are you certain it was me? Hmm. Maybe I was mistaken. Mortai shakes his head. Well, no matter, no matter. Uh, how is it that Mortai Gravesend may help you? Uh, do you see he clucks his tongue as he, spark as he speaks? The contract, perhaps? Contract? The contract? Why, it is but a simple transaction. From the depths of his huge robe, Mortai pulls forth a dusty parchment and a quill pen. I give you fifty commons. In return, after death, the Dustman faction may claim your remains. He smiles, then clucks his tongue. What use will you have for them, at that point anyway? Uh, what do the Dustman do with the body? Mortai holds up his hands, as if he doesn't know. Well, what does it matter? It's of no consequence when you pass on. Oh, it matters to me. Well, if you must know, oft times nothing is done with the body, and it is we, the dustmen, who have wasted all that money. More fools us. Mortai gives a slight smile, then looks apologetic. But rarely there are times when workers in the mortuary need to be replaced, and then we may have need of your body. You may now be animated as a corpse and put to work in the mortuary. That doesn't sound good. Ah, uh, but no harm is done, no pain. Mortai raises a finger as if to emphasize the point. And there is no danger. In exchange for money you can spend in this life, you really have to give us something that you will have no need of anyway once you have died. Mortai taps his chest. I signed the contract myself, if you must know. I shall have no need of my body when I pass on. This is, this is all fair enough. But there's also something ghoulish about it, so... I'll consider it for now. I have some other questions. Uh, of course, of course, Mortai nods. It would be my pleasure to answer any questions you may have. Are you the one who signed the, that dead contract with Agnar? Mortai frowns. He looks puzzled. Mayhap, he thinks for a moment. I do not recall the name, however. Do you have that contract with you? Mortai frowns, then looks into the folds of his robes. 
I do not normally keep the documents with me, uh, but it may be that Mortai pulls forth a sheaf of papers from within his groves and begins leaking through the documents. No, I don't have it on me. Would you like me to fetch it from one of the back rooms? You keep the contracts here in the establishment? Until they are shipped to the mortuary, yes. I have signed many contracts in my life, many contracts, including my own. It's such a trouble to haul them all to the mortuary. Oh, do you have the contract with Agnar? Okay, so I have to ask this, this again. Uh, if you could, uh, I'd like to see it. Hold on a moment. He steps up to the table and departs. Return. Updated my journal. After a while, Mortai returns, a dusty piece of parchment in his hands. He holds it up, allowing you to see it, but he does not allow it to leave his grip. Let's look it over. There it is, sir. Agnar. Very somber fellow, was quick to sign. Bucks his tongue. And now a much richer fellow. You glance over the contract. It looks genuine and very official. Very well. It all looks in order. Mortai puts the contract away, and you notice he tucks it into his robes instead of putting it in the back room. Mortai clucks his tongue. Uh, does that answer your question about the contract? Oh, if I was a thief, I could probably pick his pocket for it. Let's see if we can figure out a way to make him give it to us, though. I would like to settle that contract. Mortai looks wary. I'm afraid that's impossible. The contract is signed, settled, and binding. Oh! So we can bluff and thre and basically threaten to kill him, which would be a bad idea, I think, in the dustbin bar. We can truthfully tell him we're going to kill him, which I'd still disagree with. We could say the contract is turning the man's life apart, that would be, I guess, appealing to pity. Or we could use what looks like the dustman's own teachings against him. Let's try this. The contract is tearing the man's life apart. It is causing him distress. It is possible that he may not even be able to approach the true death with such emotions churning in his mind. Mortai chews it over for a moment. It looks like you've negotiated him into a corner. I cannot. It is a matter of law, my friend. Uh, besides, the burden lies upon the signer to overcome his own feelings in order to reach the true death. I cannot help. So what you're saying is that you'll deny him the true death for the sake of a piece of parchment. Mortai sighs and holds up his hands to place it. Play, placate. Placate? Class 8? I can't pronounce it. As if to appease me. Look, it's not how you're making it out to be. You obviously hold the phil the phil Wow, what's wrong with me today? You obviously hold the philosophy of the dustman in contempt to damn a man's soul over a piece of paper. Do the other members of your faction know of your conduct in this regard? If not, they soon will. Mortai glares at you for a moment, opens his mouth, closes it, then opens it. By the nine hells, he reaches into his robes and throws a contract to you. Here! He sniffs disdainfully. All for a man's peace of mind. Now be gone! I will leave. For now. Farewell, Mortai. The Rochi. What's up? And a normal dustman. Alright, we'll talk to the Rochi. You see a spindle-thin dustman in dirty black robes. His stiff back... His stiff black hair springs forth from his skull like a crown of spikes. And his leper-white skin is drawn sharply across his skull. He is frowning into his drink and mumbling to himself. Greetings! The dustman looks up, blink blinks once, then looks you up and down, studying you. As he studies you, he takes one of his spiked locks and points it at himself. Narochi, initiate, dustman, guard. I'm here about the posting outside. The dustman looks you up and down. Many troubles have I. Help can you. A mausoleum awakes. The dead walk. The dead disturbed. The dustman disturbed. Find out what disturbs the undead, and copper coins I will pay. Oh, very well. Where is this mausoleum? Updated my journal. Naroshi nods. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not an I, that's a J. Narosh. Mausoleum by Dustman Memorial. Go north and west from Black 
monument. Go to arch and a semicircle over your heart with this finger make. He wiggles the index finger on his right hand. To the mausoleum, go you will. I see, sounds like the Domovoy. I'll look into it then. Farewell. Alright, I guess... I guess we're done. Oh! Awaiting death. Alright, hold on. We have someone else down here. I'm they, gone. With a perfectly good dustbin sounding name. Before you is a young dustbin with stubble on his chin and dark circles beneath his eyes. He is staring at the wall with a somber expression. Uh, greetings. The dustman doesn't look up. He stares straight ahead as if he's seeing something several leagues beyond the walls of the bar. Uh, can I ask you some questions? The dustman doesn't respond. He keeps staring into the distance. Mort. Alrighty then. Mort hisses at you. Let's go, chief. This dusty might as well be a fertilizer. Uh, fair enough. Let's get out of here. As you turn to leave, the dustman suddenly speaks, his voice barely a murmur. You have to strain to hear the words. You think he said something about wanting to die. W what did you say? The boy's expression does not flicker. Do you want to die? I don't really know. Do you want to die? Yes. Why don't you want to live? This is living? He bares his teeth and his hands clench. This existence, this existence is a mockery of life. I do not wish to continue this charade any longer. Death is silent, comforting. Uh, it could very well be if you're in like intense amounts of pain. Well, hmm. We've already seen ghosts and what have you. So I would imagine death probably isn't as silent as he thinks it is. So we'll say, trust me, it's not. The boy seems irritated by the comment. And how would you know? <laughs> I don't know. I've yet to see what lies beyond death and remember it. If I die again, perhaps then I could speak of it. The dustman blinks and sneers. You lie. No man can die more than once, not without being resurrected by mighty magics. Resurrected? Resurrected? Brought back to life? The magic required is indeed powerful. Who would be capable of such power? Powerful sorcerer, priest, or one of the powers. It's not anyone I know. He frowns. I don't believe you know anyone of that sort either. If I ever die, I remember. I will return and speak of it to you. Then you may gauge whether I lie or not. Farewell. I don't really feel like killing myself in this bar, and I don't feel like having him kill me, especially not with all the other dustmen around. I'm worried about being sent back into the mortuary and into the cre crematorium. These bubbly, oh, these bubbly tanks are dispensing their contents into wooden kegs. There is a faint smell of vinegar in the air. Oh, we can search this too. Let's see what, what this is. I'm gone. I'm sorry, Miss Zombie. All right. I, I need to get in there. Oh. So sorry. Just rags. That's a shame. Alright, we have Agnar's contract. Looks like the Dusty's lost one of the debtors. Quite a mouth on her. Oh, this was the wrong place. I'm sorry. I thought this was Agnar's home. Alright, so we'll stop in and say hello to him. 
and then we'll go take care, I guess, of the of the mausoleum. You see Agnar. He doesn't look any better than before. As you approach him again, he turns slowly to face you. His face tightens. Ye again! Didn't you hear me the first time, you pox-ridden dog? Get out of me house, or so help the powers, I'll carve you where you stand. Show him his dustman contract. As you pull out the contract, the blood drains out of Agnar's face. For a moment, he seems at a loss for words. Then his temper quickly resurfaces. Where did you get that? By the powers, ye'd best tell me. We're going to tear it up. Updated my journal. You tear up the parchment, and Agnar's eyes follow the bits of paper as they float to the ground with a desperate look. He shudders slightly, then straightens, as if a great weight lifted from him. Ye. He looks like he's about to thank you, then stops and stares at you suspiciously. Nothing's free. Not in the hive, Cutter. I might need a favor then in the future. Could you help me? I ransomed me life to one man already, and I'm not about to do it again. He shakes his head. We'll settle the doubt, the debt now. I could use a place to rest. Anyard nods. That's the least I can do. I'll have my wife get some blankets out for you. I didn't want to sleep just yet. I may return when I'm ready to rest, though. Farewell. Aw, oh, good. I'm glad I had a happy ending. We can come back here then and sleep at a later point. Very nice of him to offer me a place to stay. And also very good that he doesn't want uh, something hanging over him yeah. in the future. It occurs to me that I probably should use one bandage on Mort. He's taken two damage. Okay, so how are we doing, by the way, on experience points? We are not close to leveling up. Done. Do I have unspent proficiency slots? Yes, I do. Okay. That will determine a little bit more what I'm going to do. Maybe. I don't know if we're ready for the mausoleum yet. Not if I have unused proficiency slots. Hey, we're being watched, Chief. Just look natural. Uh, casual. I think I remember what to do. I'm gone. This will be a lot more talking, though. So, what am I talking about? Huh? So we have... three unused slots. What that means is that we have th we have the capability to improve my abilities in certain types of weapons, but we have I, but we can't at the moment because we we have to meet a trainer. Someone has to agree to train me in these proficiencies. I need to find someone who can do that though. Right now, I'm I'm basically not up to my full potential. I think there's a trainer to the west of us in a different zone. So. Let's see, what time is it? We can do a little more exploring here, then I'll call this session, and we'll see if we can find a trainer of some sort. It's also getting dark outside, so maybe we should... Now, I would like to... I want to wait till about 10 before we actually try to get some rest. We'll be another two hours in game time. It should be enough to explore, I guess, a little bit down here? All right. Back past the bar, I guess. I'm gone. Wow. Lots of harlots all over the place here. I guess you do what you have to do. The Alley of Dangerous Angles. Alright, we're, right. we're not going in there yet. Dweller. 
You see a woman dressed in faded, patched up clothes. She glances at you as you approach, but turns away quickly, as if unwilling to make eye contact with you. Alright, fair enough. You need to harass the poor lady. I'm gone. I know debtors today said walking ones looks like. I'm gone. I'm gone. Alright. Let's talk to one of the harlots. You see a tired looking woman dressed in a tight leather bodice and leggings. The odor of cheap perfume surrounds her like a cloud, and her face is covered with a mask of crude makeup. She smiles as she sees you. Why don't you stay and chat with me a bit, love? Uh, hello. The woman looks coyly at you. Now ye look to be a blood who's lost something. Mayhap I can help you find it, Cutter? She smiles slightly. Oh? Oh, what good fortune! We probably lost what you're looking for back at your kip, miss. Oh, that was Mort. Uh, maybe you can help me find what I'm missing, miss. Her tone becomes businesslike. I love, now there's a matter of a finder's fee. I see. How much? Some coppers for a glance at what you're missing. Then ten copper and ten coppers to actually find out what you're missing. Oh, wow, we're gonna have some fun as it were. Do I have 10 coppers for a good time? I don't think I do at the moment. I don't think I have the funds. We only have 203 copper. Uh, forget it. I had some other questions instead. Woman frowns. I'm not a tout. She frowns and rubs two fingers together. Unless you've got some chink to pay me for my time. I can pay you. How much? For a handsome basher like yourself? She gives you a smile, a wide smile, revealing a row of dirty teeth. Three coppers would be enough to loosen my tongue. She licks her lips and frowns. Other questions of deeper chant will cost you more, though. That sounds fair. We, exa we could spend three commons because it's 200 exactly. Aye, then. She slips the jink into her palm, where it promptly vanishes. Now, uh, there were some things I wanted to know. Ask your questions, love. What? Can you tell me about this city? Her eyes now suspiciously. The city? What about it? What is it? What sigil you mean? She shrugs looks around. It's the city beneath your feet and rising to either side of you. She smiles. It makes visitors' stomachs scallop, it does. Uh, do you ever watch the movie Inception? You remember when the girl dreamer uh, folded the city like onto itself? I'm pretty sure that's what sigil's like. Where exactly is sigil? Center of the plains, to hear it told, she snorts. <laughs> you believe that, Wash? Oh, why is it Wash? She smirks. Well now, love, according to the graybeards and scholars and governors and all of the rest of them rattling their brain boxes, they says the planes go on forever. She taps her head. Who's to say where the center is? Oh, that's fair enough. I have some other questions. Can you tell me what's of interest around here? She puts her hands in her hips and pouts. Depends on your interest, Cutter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She wants to be of interest to us. I'm looking for work. She laughs. You're asking me? What? You're thinking of becoming one of the sisterhood, are you? She nearly buckles over in laughter. The screeching is similar to a drunken harpies. Eventually, the gales of laughter subside, and she takes a deep breath. You're... You're a rich man, you are. Fine. I had some other questions. Ask your questions, love. What can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? She spits and makes a half circle around her heart. That bladed witch! All high and mighty mistress of all this city, floating and silent. She kills anyone in her shadow. She tends the city, ah, she hisses, and leaves the living things in it to rot. Oh, she blames her for... I guess her predicament. Well, never mind. Farewell. Uh, Chief, can you spore me some jink? It's, uh... It's been a long time, it has. I'm not even going to ask how you intend to accomplish this. The woman breaks in. It's twice the cost for the Mimmer, or any other degenerate. Uh, Mimmer? Mimmer is a talking encyclopedia. Uh, that's me, Chief. Hmm. Well, I see. Well, don't sweat it, Mort. From the looks of her, I'm probably saving you from dying twice. Oh, crap. I didn't realize what I actually clicked on until I was halfway done with this, I was halfway done with the sentence. May a pox shrivel your innards, 
You have the stink and the fashion sense of a goat herd, and you're twice as ugly. Wow. Uh. Taunts, all right. Mort stares, hypnotized, as the harlot lets loose a stream of obscenities. At the end of the verbal avalanche, Mort is silent for a moment, then turns to you. Wow, chief. Got a few more taunts for the old arsenal. He turns back to the harlot, who is catching her breath. I'm also in love. Oh, that's right! I'm gone. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I shouted that. Mort has the ability to taunt. Here we go. Litany of Curses. In fact, can we can we see this on him? Information. I know I should be able to see it somehow, but I guess I can't here. Let's go to Information and see... No, we can't. We can't see it here. Well, he can taunt people to attack him, and it doesn't really have any cooldown. Uh, I think it, he can do it like once per round, so he can keep people attacking him, and if people try to run away, he can taunt them, and I think they'll turn around and come back and fight again. So it's useful to use that instead of chasing people all over the city. Alright, let's go... Let's go to the northwestern portion of the hive. Okay, and this looks like a good place to stop for a bit. So, we'll stop right. here, everybody? That sounds wonderful. Alright, everyone, I'm going to stop here for a little bit. Thank you for watching. When we pick back up, we'll start exploring this section. I'll see you guys then.